सर्वे सेंसेस ऑल द डिवोट इज देयर वाचा कल्पत रूपय से कृपा सिंधु पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम अनकोटी वैष्णवृंद की जय जगद्गुरु शिल प्रभुपाद की जय स्कॉन वर्तमान गुरुवृंद की जय सोलन जयपता का स्वामी गुरु महाराज की जय हरे कृष्णा सो हियर वी आर विल विल बी डिस्कसिंग दी गिरिराज गोवर्धन लीला इट्स अर्ली मॉर्निंग हियर इन विशाखापटनम आई जस्ट कंप्लीटेड दी मंगल आरती दिस दामोदर मास वी बीन रिसाइटिंग गजेंद्र स्तुति एंड द ट्वेल्थ चैप्टर ऑफ द भगवद गीता एंड द गोपी गीता अपार्ट फ्रॉम दामोदर राष्ट्रकम एंड एवरी डे वी आर ह्यूरिंग वन पास टाइम ऑफ ए डिवोटी ऑफ दी लॉर्ड सो आई जस्ट कंप्लीटेड दैट रेसिटेशन इन अ वेरी हरीड मैनर एंड जॉइंट यू ऑल इन दिस जूम अदरवाइज इट गोज ऑन अप टू सिक्स सिक्स फिफ्टीन और समथिंग लाइक दैट सो आई एम वेरी ग्लैड टू हैव ऑल ऑफ यूर एसोसिएशन टूडे इट्स ए प्रिवलेज एंड Uh, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad um, when I take association of all the devotees. Uh, it's very inspiring for me also uh, to uh, share and uh, hear from all of you also. So um, uh, I think I need to speak for an hour. So um, in a, in a, in very brief, we will uh, discuss about uh, Govardhan Lila today. Uh, Govardhan Lila, I think, is one of the most uh, popular uh, leela not only for iskon devotees but i think around the world even for those people who don't know much about uh, krishna i think the four five things that they know about krishna is uh, ras leela very popular and makanchori leela that he steals butter and kaliya leela govardhan leela these are some very very popular leelas and uh, and for iskon devotees also this is very n- near to heart especially this is one festival where there is no fasting <laughs> only feasting mostly all the festivals there is fasting then feasting but here this is all the way feasting and it's a wonderful wonderful um, leela so before i begin we will recite the uh, pranam mantra of um, giriraj ji and then we'll start today's class namaste girirajaya shri govardhana namine अशेष क्लेशनाशा परमानंदने गिरिराज गोवर्धन की जय सो वी आर प्रेइंग टू गिरिराज जी नमस्ते गिरिराजाय द राजा द किंग ऑफ गिरि ऑल द माउंटेन वी आर पेइंग अवर हम्बल ओबी सेंसेस टू यू नमस्ते गिरिराजाय श्री गोवर्धन नामिने ओ यू आर named as govardhan why are you called govardhan because um, you do vardhan you do nourishment of whom of go go is cows this uh, cows are such an important uh, part of our di- uh, our life because the place that we all aspire to go is also goloka where the cows are uh, worshiped and you know uh, cows are so dear to krishna and govardhan is very dear to krishna because he nourishes those cows so you are named as govardhan since you nourish the cows go is cows and also you nourish the gopas because go is also gopas and all the cowherd boys are also you know uh, playing on your uh, on your land and you also nourish the gopis go is also gopi because the gopis are so happy uh, number of pastimes that uh, take place with gopis and krishna the very popular pastimes have happened in govardhan the dan keli komudi or the dan keli um uh, leela where krishna collects tax from the gopis and how the gopis uh, also one time attack krishna by hiding here and there so there there are lots of things that happen there and we also know that how uh, the gopis uh, they make preparations for radha and krishna to enjoy in the caves of govardhan and then there is lot of things that happen on govardhan so uh, it's not only that govardhan is nourishing the cows it's not only that govardhan is nourishing the gopas also nourishing the gopis and of course um, govardhan also is nourishing the saintly devotees go swamis go is also senses and these go swamis have been trying to control their senses and they are on the top of giriraj ji under some tree and meditating on krishna so govardhan is also one who is nourishing these go swamis and then govardhan is also one who is um you know uh, helping us to control our senses because go also means senses so when we engage our 
um, mind and body and senses in service of Govardhan. And then he helps us by not allowing our senses to be distracted and engage them in service of Krishna. And Govardhan also means um, increase in the count of the gopis. Because when we serve Govardhan, then we get opportunity to be part of Radha Krishna's Nitya Leela. That means we could also get a form of gopi. So one who increases the count of the go, you know, that is also Govardhan. And of course, Govardhan also fulfills all material desires. You know, in the next line it says, Ashesha Klesha Nashaya. Govardhan, if somebody surrenders to Govardhan or takes shelter of Govardhan, then he is uh, relieved from Adi Devik, Adi Bhautik, Adhyatmik, all types of Kleshas. And Parma Nanda Daine. So not only does he remove the Klesha, Govardhan also gives us Ananda. And that is so important in spiritual life because we can't continue doing something if we don't get ananda and taste in it. Mostly we see devotees um, complaining that when we came new in Krishna consciousness, everything was so interesting. The first arti, the first time looking at the deities, the first round of chanting, the first 16 rounds, the first time of prasadam, the first Sunday feast class, everything was so beautiful. But at, after a period of time, it's, it takes a little endeavor. And why is that? Now, usually it's like um, when you go to a shop, especially when they newly open some shop, they give you some, especially in India, I don't know about the West, but they'll give you discount. If a, if a sari costs 2,000 rupees, if they have newly opened it, they'll say own half price, 50%, only 1,000 rupees you can take the sari. But once you become regular customers and the shop is established, they don't give that great discounts. Then you have to you know, actually pay the price. So same thing in spiritual life. When we are new, we get lots of discounts. Krishna is so kind. You know, He'll give us all that ananda and all that ruchi and you know, taste for everything. But after some time, when we get established, then we need to earn it. We need to work hard for it. It doesn't come so easy. Everything is like, it takes a little endeavor. But if we take shelter of Giriraji, then uh, Paramananda Daine, he will give that Ananda. And to continue in any, any activity, unless and until we get some pleasure out of the activity, we don't want to do it. And when we are doing some spiritual practice, if we get Ananda out of it, well, then we'll be able to continue it. So Giriraji gives that uh, Ananda, Giriraji gives that um, bliss in doing Krishna's Seva. So that uh, uh, Giriraji, uh, we are going to talk about that Giriraji today, who is removing all the klesha from our life, who is giving us Parmananda, who is nourishing the uh, devotees uh, of the Lord. So um, out of the 335 chapters of Srimad Bhagavatam, 90 chapters are in the 10th canto and out of which 40 chapters are dedicated to Vraja Leela and out of which 4 chapters are dedicated to Govardhan Leela. So this is something um, really important. We see that chapter number 24, 25, 26 and 27 of Bhagavatam is dedicated to Giriraji. Uh, in the first uh, 24th chapter it is about how Lord worship is, worships Govardhan and the next chapter is how the Lord um, lifts the Govardhan and then it's the feedback from Vrajavasis in the next chapter. How the Vrajavasis are talking about wonderful Krishna. How did he do this? Amazing. And then in the last uh, chapter we hear of how Indra uh, approaches the Lord and begs forgiveness. Does a wonderful stuti and then goes back to his uh, devotional service or job what he is supposed to do. So these uh, four chapters and today our discussion is not only from Srimad Bhagavatam but to enhance the uh, Leelas and get into more Rasa we will be talking from Gopal Champu and Ananda Vrindavan Champu where, uh, and Garga Samhita where this whole Leela has been very elaborately uh, described, the whole Govardhan Leela. So um, who is this Govardhan you know, and why is he so special? Jiva Goswami says that um, Radharani herself has declared this Govardhan as the best of Krishna's servants. So there are many uh, devotees who have been addressed as Krishna's dear servants in Bhagavatam, especially in the 10th canto we see that 
Yudhishthir Maharaj has been um, addressed as Hari Das. We see Uddhav has been addressed as Hari Das. Hari is Lord and Das is a servant of the Lord. Narad Muni has been addressed as Hari Das. But Govardhan has been addressed as Hari Das Avarya, one who is the best of all the servants of um, uh, Hari. So why is he so special? I was hearing one very beautiful class by His Holiness Giriraj Swami Maharaj and he was making such a nice point. He said that why is Giriraj special? Because a servant who when serving the master is taking a lot of pleasure and the master is also getting pleasure when the servant is serving, then that servant is the best servant. So he, he went on to explain that sometimes when we are rendering services, Okay, sometimes we take pleasure, but sometimes we are like, you know, I had to miss my prashadam, I had to miss my sleep, or oh, it was so hectic. So, um, if we are not relishing the seva 100%, then we are not the best of the servants. But Giriraji, he relishes the seva. So, he gives pleasure to the Lord. At the same time, he is also so ecstatic and so happy when he is rendering service to the Lord. So, that is why he is called Harida Savarya. Because he is the, he's the best of the uh, servants of the Lord. And also, uh, we see that um, Giriraji has actually come out from the Lord's heart. In the Garga Samhita, it is explained that after uh, Rasalila, when Radharani and Krishna were taking rest, Radharani approaches Krishna and says, My Lord, if you are happy with my service, I want something from you. And Krishna says, What is that? And he says, I want, I want a special place to perform, where we can perform our pastimes, you know, a beautiful place. And then Krishna closes his eyes. And then a small uh, pebble-like thing comes out from Krishna's heart. And that pebble, a small stone, grows into big, 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 big rock. And then it becomes big hell with hundred peaks, Shatashringa, with beautiful caves and waterfalls and small ponds and uh, lush green gardens and very beautiful flowering uh, trees and fruits and beautiful place. And Radhani becomes so happy. And she gets so attached to Giriraji that she tells Krishna, that if I am coming with you, I know, for the pastimes, your earthly pastimes, then I want Yamuna, I want Giriraj, I want Vrindavan, only then I am coming. So uh, that is uh, Giriraji. He's, he's come out from Krishna's heart as a gift to Radharani. In, whereas in the Bhavishya Puran, it says that actually Radha and Krishna were sitting together and they were meditating and some 21 energies came out from their body. So of the 21 energies, 10 became the forest, different forest in what we see in Vrindavan today. 10 became the villages which we see near Vrindavan. One is, 21st one is Vrindavan itself, the land of Vrindavan. And then Radharani's heart and Krishna's heart combined together and then Giriraji manifested. So Giriraji is very, very special. Of course, um, Sometimes devotees ask whether Giriraji is Krishna or Giriraji is a devotee of Krishna. But this is something like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Krishna or Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is devotee of Krishna? But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna in the form of a devotee. So Giriraji is Krishna in the form of a devotee who comes to serve uh, Krishna. And of course, uh, as devotees, we are more benefited if we worship Giriraji as a servant of Krishna because Krishna's devotees are more merciful than Krishna. So we can, I mean, he, Giriraji is Krishna, but we can always worship uh, Giriraji in the mood that Giriraji is the best servant of Krishna. So this is uh, um, uh, Giriraji. Of course, um, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says that uh, among the five, uh, uh, what you say, caretakers or doorkeepers of Vrindavan, one of them is Giriraji. So if we don't have blessings of Giriraji, then we can't get um, Krishna Prem. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says that uh, if you want Krishna Prem, then there are five people you can approach. One is Gopeshwar Mahadev. If you want to serve the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna, then he can uh, give us entrance uh, in service of Radha and Krishna. In fact, there are a number of devotees, if we see, um, you know, in the history, who had actually approached Lord Shiva and then that's how they got uh, uh, access to Radha and Krishna. Whether it's the famous Narsi Mehta from Gujarat or even for that matter so many uh, devotees who have first worshipped Lord Shiva and then Lord Shiva gives them access to Krishna. So Gopeshwar Mahadev is one. And then uh, Vishwanath Chakrathakura says Vrinda Devi. 
Brenda Devi, and, and that is why Srila Prabhupada has introduced this Tulasi Puja in every ISKCON center where every single day we are praying to Vrinda Devi, Radha Krishna Seva Pabo E Abhilashi. Oh, please give us the service of Radha and Krishna. So, Gopeshwar Mahadev, Vrinda Devi, and the Guru Parampara. Because uh, the Guru Parampara that we see, they were, they're all manjaris, and they've all come here um, just to, you know, give us that taste and catch our hand and take us back home, uh, back to Godhead. So when we approach Guru Parampara, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur in his famous Guru Vashtakam, in the Falashruti, he says that that devotee who every single morning in the Brahma Muhurta takes bath and worships Sri Guru with this Guru Vashtakam at the end of the life will go back home, back to Godhead and get an opportunity to serve Radha and Krishna. So it's Guru Parampara, it's Gopeshwar Mahadev, it's Vrinda Devi. And then of course uh, it is our um, uh, Girirajji. If we approach our uh, Girirajji then he can uh, uh, give us uh, uh, shelter. He can take us uh, back home, back to Godhead. So um, today in brief uh, we will discuss why does this Leela actually happen? You know. Why did Krishna perform? See, there are so many things that Yogamaya does. She is the director of all the pastimes that are happening in Vrindavan. But the script writer is Krishna. He is the one who writes the script. What's going to happen when? So this whole uh, Giriraj Leela has been actually orchestrated by Krishna. So what's the reason and why did he do that? So there are many reasons given by different Acharyas. And uh, uh, of course, one very popular reason and very clearly visible is that Indra had pride. Krishna wanted to remove that pride. So he did this Govardhan Leela so that um, Indra becomes humble. And then of course, another reason is um, uh, very special and secret reason is that uh, actually Krishna was once performing some pastime on the top of Govardhan. And uh, he was, uh, and Krishna takes service from everybody. Sometimes he is with Radharani, sometimes he is with Chandravali, sometimes he is with some other gopis. So one day Krishna was, uh, you know, going to the Kunj of Chandravali. And Giriraj sees that. So Giriraj uh, catches hold of Krishna and says, Hey, I saw you. You were going to Chandravali's Kunja. So Krishna says, Don't talk about it. You know, let's forget about it. Don't say this to Radharani. And Giriraj Ji says, well, actually, I am follower of Radharani. I don't think I can hide facts from her. I'll inform her. And Krishna says, don't do that. We can work out some arrangement. So Giriraj, uh, Giriraj, Giriraj Ji is not agreeing. So Krishna tells Giriraj, don't you love me? So Giriraj says, well, I love you, but I love Radharani more. So the only thing that I can do is I can remain neutral. I won't talk about it, but you will still be caught. And Krishna says, how will I be caught? He said, because of your footprints. Your footprints are going to Chandravali's uh, Kunja. And Radharani is very expert. When she comes on the top of Giriraj, and, she, and she's going to check your footprints are going through uh, Chandravali's Kunja. So Krishna says, can you help me wipe them? And Giriraj says, I don't want to be part of the crime. And then Krishna wonders what I should do next. So then he orchestras this whole uh, uh, Govardhan Leela, where he has to lift the Girirajji for seven days and seven nights. And then there is continuous rain. And all those footprints uh, of Krishna, wherever he has gone, are wiped out. So when Krishna actually lifts the Govardhan hill, he's winking at Giriraj and saying, look, my job is done. So now after seven days, if you know, Radharani won't make out where I went you know, and what happened. So that's when uh, uh, one of the Tikakars, Acharya, was mentioning this. And of course, um, there's another reason also why Krishna did this Giriraj Leela. Is, um, actually, these uh, hills are a little upset with Indra because these hills all had wings and they used to move around freely. But once Indra thought this is a big nuisance, all the time they are going up and down, these heavy bodies, they are moving and floating. So Indra decided to cut the wings of all the hills. So all the hills are a little upset with Indra and they wanted to take a revenge. So, you know, of course, these are all just to give some rasa to the whole uh, Leela. So then Krishna says, okay, fine, I'll take your revenge. So he, he um, humbles Indra by lifting the hills, you know, whose uh, wings were cut by um, uh, Indra. That is one reason. And of course, um, by this Giriraj Leela, 
Krishna wants to uh, prove his uh, statements of Bhagavad Gita, where he says, Name uh, Bhakta Pranashyati. I always protect my devotees. He's Gopi Janavallabha, Giri Varadhari. He holds the Giri Rajji and he's always there to protect his devotees in every situation. Whereas some of the Acharyas say the whole point of doing this Giri Raj Leela was that Krishna wanted to reciprocate with his devotees. Because um, these gopis, they were always doing Surya Puja. Why were they doing Surya Puja and worshipping Shiva, uh, worshipping Surya Dev? Externally, when asked, they told their parents and mothers and grandmothers, oh, we are doing Surya Puja because we want to get good husband, healthy husband, young, good-looking husband. But internally, they were actually praying to Surya Dev, the sun god, that can you move a little quicker? Because if you move quicker and if it's evening, then Krishna will come back after grazing the cows and then we can have his association and then we can have Ras Leela. So can you, you know, increase your speed? That's the prayer they want to do uh, to, the, to Surya Dev. And the Gopas are always worshipping the moon god. And, and externally, when asked, why are they worshipping moon god? They say, well, because we want good health. Because moon god is the one who gives rasa in all the plants and he gives the taste and also we just want you know a good health but internally what actually they are doing is they are negotiating with the moon god can you move a little faster so that the sun comes quickly and then we go on grazing the cows with krishna so the gopis are praying to sun god and the gopas are praying to moon god but basically everybody wants to be with krishna 24 hours so Krishna thought, how should I reciprocate with them and where they can become satisfied? So here he does this um, Govardhan Leela where for seven days, seven nights, 24 hours, all the devotees are able to you know, uh, be in his association. And um, this is the only Leela, Krishna Leela, where we see that Krishna is reciprocating simultaneously with all devotees in all rasas. Because usually either he is in Virya Rasa fighting with some demon or he is with Yashoda Maya Vatsalya Rasa getting tied in a Damodar form or he is in Madhurya Rasa with the gopis doing Rasalila or he is in the uh, uh, playing grounds of Vrindavan, Sakya Rasa rolling in the dust with his friends. So he is like individually responding. But here in Giriraj Leela we see he is simultaneously you know, um, reciprocating with all the devotees in all rasas because um, Yashoda Mata is there and then uh, the gopis are also there, Nanda Baba is there and then the Sakhas are also there and those uh, who worshipped Krishna in the Shanta Rasa, the Brahmanas and they are also there and the uh, Dasya Bhava, there are so many gopas and uh, gopis who loved him in Dasya Bhava also, they are like a servant of the Lord, even they are there. So simultaneously all the five Rasa, uh, Adan Pradhan is going on, give and take is uh, going on and everybody is so uh, happy. So that is one reason uh, Lord did this uh, uh, Raj Leela. And of course, another reason is Krishna is a monopoly God. You love him, then you only love him. He will not allow any, you, love, you to love anybody else. So he didn't want to encourage demigod worship. And my dear devotee should only love me and should only worship me. So he stops this um, uh, Govardhan, uh, he stops this Indra Puja and uh, introduces um, Govardhan Puja. So we see to protect his devotees, to reciprocate with his devotees, to kill the pride of his devotees, to encourage the prides of the hill who were uh, humbled by Indra and uh, to uh, also the Chandravali pastime. And then um, another uh, very important um, reason or lesson for us as sadhakas is that um, the Govardhan Leela is very hope giving because sometimes we may think oh I mean like you know I am I did so many aprads which I was not aware as a new devotee or sometimes maybe knowingly unknowingly or so many things that we must have done in our past life will Krishna forgive us 
will we become dear to krishna will we able to come to that level but when we see this govardhan leela we see that how indra who apparently committed such a big vaishnava aparad was forgiven by the lord then we get some hope because um, actually krishna's mathematics is very difficult to understand if we compare this um, two leelas uh, brahma vimohan leela and uh, govardhan leela in both the cases both the demigods have committed mistake whereas brahma's mistake was a little smaller he didn't want to kill the vrajavasis he just wanted to analyze whether he is lord or not but uh, indra wanted to kill them cold blooded murder he just wanted to murder the devotees whereas in uh, skanda puran it is said the about the six kind of aparadhas uh, the first offense is when you see a vaishnav if you don't smile you're not happy on seeing the vaishnav also it's an aparad so when we read all those aparad we are we are so much uh, i mean terrified oh i don't want to commit any vaishnav aparad but forget about smiling or being happy indra wanted to kill a vaishnav and not only normal vaishnav a vaishnav vrajavasis who are the most dear devotees of the lord but lord forgives indra and indra did it for 7 days 7 nights whereas if you see from the brahma's point of view what brahma did did was just for 1 minute brahma's 1 minute for 1 minute he was mistaken that is he god or not let me check so he takes those coward boys and hides them and then he sees oh krishna has already manifested into different uh, sets of coward boys and cows so he puts them back just a minute of illusion he understands his mistake he asks forgiveness but he is not forgiven or rather you know krishna was very strict with him but indra plans it he has malice he is envious of krishna brahma was not envious of krishna it's just that he wanted to analyze oh is he really god but but this uh, indra became envious of krishna and his devotees and he wanted to kill them but krishna forgives indra so uh, krishna's mathematics is very difficult to understand whom he wants to forgive what is going to do but at least we have hope when we uh, hear this past time that okay just like chetana mahaprabhu and nityananda prabhu forgive jagai madhai and krishna forgive indra there is some hope for us so um yeah these are the various of course there, there may be 100 other odd reasons for krishna performing govardhan leela because krishna's every leela or every pastime is not an isolated uh, one particular uh, purpose related it will be so many purposes at a time he will be maybe doing thousand you know satisfying thousand people by doing just one leela you know which may be having some connection in the past so you know everything is orchestrated in a very very class way when krishna does something so this is what happens you know um, for so many n- number of purposes that krishna does this govardhan leela so um but the main purpose for sadhakas for us to take lesson is how uh, the pride of uh, indra was crushed and how dem- great demigods like indra and brahma you know who are so advanced so as to they are personally serving the lord they are managers in the cosmic administration of the lord but even they can be illusioned so we need to be so careful you know um uh, to always take shelter of uh, scriptures guru sadhu and shastra and keep the right temperature of the mind because as anything can happen because when they got illusion then we are just normal uh, living beings so what happened and how did this leela happen you know um it says that uh, on the day of govardhan leela if somebody hears this uh, govardhan leela past time on the day of govardhan puja which is today the tithi then it says in the garga samhita that two things can ha- two things will happen to that devotee one is that you know in the material world he will enjoy opulence like devaraj like indra so much material opulence he will get and after leaving this body he will enjoy like nanda raj like nanda that means he will have a 
opportunity to personally associate with the lord in a relationship with the lord so um though we know the past time but we keep hearing it and especially we should hear it on the day of govardhan uh, puja so what exactly happened how this whole past time happened so it benefits us and purifies us spiritually and also uh, we gain a lot uh, materially so what happened on this day 5000 years ago uh, the past time of the um, the wives of brahmanas had just concluded krishna had come back the brahmana wives had fed krishna with lots of prasadam they didn't want to go back krishna had to literally push them back to their husbands and then when krishna is coming back he sees that um, everybody is very busy so he just uh, very innocently approaches his father i have never seen everybody so busy what's 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 everybody up to what is this preparation going on what is this festival what are you doing so nanda maharaj is reluctant to reply because he ignores krishna krishna is just a 7 year old small boy so krishna again uh, retaliates he again asks his question he says that um, please don't hide anything from me i'm your family member especially i'm your son and i'll have to carry on these family traditions in future after you so one is supposed to hide secrets from enemies but not from one's own family members and what is this that you are going to perform what is this happening what is everybody preparing for is it based on vedic scriptures or superstition are you doing it because it is there in the scriptures or just because it has been passed on from your ancestors and are you doing it with the help of a guru what is this happening what is this uh, festival all about and then when krishna starts giving so many reasons then uh, nanda baba out of affection takes krishna in the lap and starts speaking he said okay i'll tell you what's happening we are doing indra puja so krishna asks who is indra so nanda maharaj explains oh you know he is the god of the rains and we need to please him and because we are vaishyas and we are cow protectors and these cows are nourished by the grass and the grass grows only when there is rain and so many things nanda maharaj explains and then krishna starts uh, refuting all the reasons given by um, nanda maharaj of worshiping indra by the karma mimamsa philosophy Uh, where he talks about no no it's not required that's indra's job even if you worship him or you don't worship him he has to give rain that's his job to protect the cows is your job you do your karma and indra will do his karma you don't have to bribe indra to do his own job even if you don't give him anything he has to do it that's his duty so this is something like you know the modern day children may argue that you put a 100 rupees in the in the machine in the airport and the coke comes out so you put the rupee money and the coke has to come out it's natural why do you have to worship the machine for that it's just a natural process so like that uh, krishna starts uh, you know various arguments and uh, nanda maharaj is not completely convinced so he says okay krishna so what do you want us to do so he said don't do uh, indra puja do govardhan puja because govardhan is uh, giving us grass and govardhan is giving us fruits and govardhan is giving us wood and govardhan is nourishing our cows and all so indra uh, so nanda maharaj says uh, okay we will do indra puja now and then we'll also do govardhan puja so krishna says no stop indra puja and do only govardhan puja and then uh, of course finally um, nanda maharaj is convinced but in this whole uh, process we see that krishna speaks so many things which are not correct uh, the absolute truth is not speaking absolute truth <laughs> of you know for a change he's speaking something which is not correct so um, sometimes uh, we you know we see that um, um certain things are spoken because of a certain context you know so it is so important uh, in the, the the context of a situation or the context is so critical in comprehending the content sometimes um, if we uh, misquote shlokas from here and there without the proper context we can actually convince or prove our point which may not be right 
So it's very important what is the context that Krishna spoke because he was not speaking here as a Vaishnava Acharya or you know something. He's just like a small boy trying to uh, pose an argument um, just to get something done. So this is something like you know not speaking the truth to get something done. Like sometimes you know um, as as a child I remember you know sometimes uh, my mother we 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 were very fond of watching this. Um, uh, Mahabharat and uh, there was another serial used to come when we were young in DD1, you know, Mowgli, Mowgli, you know, some uh, jungle boy. So, in you know, when my mother used to come out and we are, we are not getting up and we are frozen in front of the TV and watching that, then she will speak in other way around. She will say, oh, looks like they are not hungry today, is it not? Looks like they don't want to eat their favorite dish, like me and my sister. So she'll speak in a different way where we'll say, no, 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 we want to eat actually. No, no, we want to do it. So she speaks it in a different way just to get the right thing done. So here we see Krishna also, he speaks in ulta way, you know, not required, you know, everything happens automatically. Why is, where is the question of doing uh, puja? Everybody has to do their karma. So he's just trying to convince um, Ananda Maharaj. And of course, uh, when the Lord tries to convince, who will not get convinced? So they get convinced. And then uh, here is uh, Indra. When he hears this whole thing, uh, he gets crazy. He says, this is absurd. You know, what is this Krishna is trying to do? Who is this little boy? And then he starts blaspheming the Lord. And we hear those verses where he calls the Lord Matya means a mortal boy, you know, a normal immortal boy. And just see how, what an audacity, the way he's talking and speaking as if he's a great pandit. And, but we, he has no knowledge and, you know, he's, he's childish, you know, and he just goes on offending Lord, you know. So um, what I found very interesting in this whole pastime is that, um, you know, this verse that we um, read in Bhagavad Gita, second chapter, Dhyayate Vishya Fungsha Sangha Sangopajayate, you know, that whole process of how when lust creeps in and then how anger arises and then from anger, you know, buddhi nashat, you know, we, the, the, the memory becomes volatile, unsteady and then how our intelligence becomes unsteady and then how finally we fall down. And I was just thinking that in this whole pastime we see that Indra is an honorable, respected demigod, the king of demigods. But what exactly happens is that when the lust arises, because um, pride is also a desire, lust is also a desire, but lust uh, is more physical, where you need some physical object to fulfill your uh, desire. And pride is more subtle, where you want honor and you want respect and you know, you want that recognition, but that is also a desire. And and both of it, when you don't get it, then anger comes. Here we see in the case of um, Indra, what was the problem with him? He didn't get respect. That's all was his problem. And with that, um, uh, anger arose. And with anger, uh, you know, uh, the memory became volatile. And then he lost his intelligence. And then he did something so grave. I mean, he did something so uh, stupid. And it's like, you know, trying to kill the devotees of the Lord. Because Buddhi Nasha, the, um, you know, he just lost his intelligence. So when you lose your intelligence, it's like in Hindi it says, Vinasha Kale Viprita Buddhi. You know, you will start doing something very, very foolish. And then he lost the sense of proportion also. Actually, there was nothing wrong on part of Indra to become angry. It's normal and natural for anybody, for that matter, who is regularly respected. They, they expect respect, even for normal devotees also. Imagine a senior devotee who has been used to doing the uh, Mahamangala Arti on Janmashmi midnight every year, for years together. He has that honor. He does the you know, uh, Mangala Arti on the Janmashmi night. And suddenly one fine day he's told, you cannot do it. And somebody from the audience whom, you, whom we never know their name also, hey, come on, you come and do it. Uh, yeah, it will hurt. What is this? What did I do? Why am I, you know, deprived of it? Same thing happened to Indra. It was very normal and natural. Sometimes 
it's not because of our qualification but because of repeatedly getting honor one becomes used to it and they start feeling that they deserve it so here indra regularly gets worship and it was very natural for him to get angry that why am i deprived of this worship why am i deprived of the offerings so what he could have do is okay go down there and talk to krishna about it so krishna you are stopping my worship so that's all right so what's the reason did i do anything wrong why am i deprived of my you know my regular uh, worship and okay if you want to worship govardhan that's fine even i can join you but the whole point is uh, when he was uh, deprived of it uh, he lost it he was not sane you know he's like why am i you know instead of having an introspection he was like why am i not getting it i want it this is like if that senior devotee was deprived of the aarti okay he should feel bad about it or he should maybe ask them why did you do that or or you know he can get angry even indra could have get angry on the vrajavasis and scold them don't do this or why do you are doing it but imagine that senior devotee you know starts beating devotees or take a machine gun and i want to kill all of you because you didn't allow me to do aarti and that's what indra wanted to do is i am going to kill you that's it because you didn't give me offering so it became unproportionate and why did this happen disproportionate punishment because of um, lust that that uh, greed for honor uh, you know he just lost the balance and um, see sometimes um, even as sadhakas there may be some anartha inside our heart which we are not even aware of but if krishna is very kind on us he'll make us aware of it he'll somehow make such situations in our life where we will be we'll get awareness of the anartha which which is lying deep inside our hearts like in case of indra probably indra also didn't knew that he had so much pride because uh, all the situations in his life was very conducive he was the head of the demigods <clears throat> and all the apsaras were dancing and everybody was respecting and he had a comfortable life he was a respectable person respected by everybody but suddenly one fine day when he doesn't get respect then he understands that he has a craving for respect so sometimes when we get something very easily we think we are nice vaishnavas actually we are so nice and kind and humble but when we are actually deprived of something then the real us comes out it's like um, provocating situations when that's why you see um, the if you if you want to know a devotee we have to see him during provocating situations how is his reaction what does he do so the provocating situations they introduce us to us and they also introduce us to others sometimes we also don't know ourselves the way we put a mask around people you know and the way we want to uh, show what we are sometimes we cheat our own self by continuously being hypocrite we also forget actually what we are of course hypocrisy may not be the right word sometimes um, in a positive way even if devotees have certain agitation certain urges they try to control themselves in a positive way we can call it as discipline and if they continue doing that then there will be purification and slowly slowly those urges and agitation go away but sometimes if it's still underlying but we try to put up an act then that is hypocrisy there are two two uh, extremes of it but what happened here is even indra didn't knew that this is there inside him when a provocating situation came up then that dark side of him came out he could not control his uh, uh, anger the why didn't i get uh, respect so um, even if there are some dark sides inside us which we are not aware of then when we are put into provocating situations they will come out dark side everybody has but how dark it is that we can know only when certain situations we are put in you know otherwise we will think we'll pass ourselves in with good marks so i am fine and i am okay so here uh, you know uh, indra had this dark side which he was not aware of and krishna was so kind uh, to make him aware of that you know if krishna loves us then he'll make us aware of that 
somehow or the other in our lives also sometimes we see there are so many obstacles that we face but we actually if we actually deeply analyze them every obstacle or obstruction that we have faced in our life actually introduce us to so many aspects or dimensions of our personality that we don't know for example suppose if we are put in a situation and we we could somehow maintain a balance and we didn't get agitated and very peaceful we pa- passed it then that is also a good sign we come to know about ourselves oh okay so i have that capacity i can tolerate or if we were not able to tolerate then also there is an introduction to ourselves oh okay so oh this is my weak point oh this triggers me oh this i can't tolerate oh this is my problem so it helps us to know ourselves better and uh, this is what happened here so uh, krishna loves indra so he made sure that indra comes to know that look this is the uh, this is the anartha and you need to work on it sometimes i feel that if we if there is no such provocating situations in our life and we keep going we'll always assume that we are okay we are fine we are okay we are fine and the underlying disease may keep growing and may keep growing and we'll be never aware of it and then it may come to the last stage cancer so at least krishna is kind that you know sometimes he make certain situations wherein we get a scan of ourselves and we understand okay this is first stage cancer and we start take, taking medicines or we start taking proper precautions so he did this to indra and now indra knows okay fine this is the anartha he has in his um, heart of course um, all said and done um, it's not that um, when you see a devotee in a provocating situation his reactions or responses it's not that that is the whole of that devotee there are so many aspects of that devotee that is just one part of it sometimes um, when we see these past times of indra we start assuming oh indra is you know oh he is envious and oh he is no actually this is just one small aspect of indra's life there are many other aspects of indra's life which we don't know because uh, in the bhagavatam it's mostly like um, cricket highlights like sometimes you know there is this cricket game and they just show you the highlights and the highlights you only see is that the bowler is bowling and the batsman gets out 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 that's it and within 15 minutes they show you the whole game so if uh, somebody doesn't understand they will think wow this bowler is great first ball second ball third ball he made everybody out no it's not like that the whole game there is many things that happened the batter did score many runs and the bowler did fail while bowling many balls balls it's not that you know every time he did great but only as of now the highlights is uh, for a particular purpose for us just to know what exactly happened so it's not that you know indra is just one stupid demigod who is always making mistakes no only his mistakes are told to us in bhagavatam so that we don't make such mistakes but there are so many other beautiful aspects of indra's life if it was not so indra would not have been in the in, in the hierarchy you know on the top position in krishna's cosmic administration he must be having so many wonderful qualities but certain things are highlighted for us to get quick lessons so that we don't do those um, uh, mistakes you know sometimes as devotees we take uh, demigods very cheaply in fact devotees take even vaikuntha very cheaply sometimes you hear the conversations of devotees and they talk of vaikuntha as if they're talking about a, a, you know kroger or dmart or some you know something like that oh you're going to dmart it's like oh you want to go to vaikuntha is it we we want to go to goloka i mean it's like vaikuntha is not some you know you know a, a, a kroger or some departmental store in the next lane it's vaikuntha it's a big thing uh, demigods are not somebody who is just our next door neighbor and see what he did oh, they are demigods they are amazing devotees of the lord but just to help us certain lessons are highlighted for example in the govardhan lila they just want to sukhdev goswami wants to highlight that how bhakti is so important and um, if you don't have bhakti even if you may have many qualifications it's not going to please krishna and these vrajavasis because they have bhakti see how krishna loves them reciprocates with them protects them and how they surrender to the lord so uh, anyway coming back to our uh, this um the dark side of indra got exposed and that is the mercy of the lord so he helped indra to know this and now uh, 
in the eyes and passion in the mode of passion usually in the mode of passion one overestimates one capacity in the mode of ignorance one underestimates one's capacity now indra is in completely in mode of passion and he's like oh i'm going to destroy everybody what is this what is this krishna talking about you know he's um, asking his uh, parents uh, parents to do this uh, govardhan puja so he's getting all um, upset see of course um, actually this lust anger greed all those anarthas are there in the demons also and all these anarthas are there in the demigods also but the difference between the demigods and demons is the demigods will never cross their boundary they will uh, remain fixed to their bond and not cross the boundary like um, like initiated devotees we also have a bond and a boundary what is the bond i'll do my 16 rounds that's my agreement what's the boundary i'll never break four rules and regulations the four regs i'll never break them this is a bond this is a boundary okay i'm a miss mangalarthi sometime okay i decided to do 64 for kartik i couldn't do it i did 60 i did 32 but i'll never go beyond my boundary i'll never break four rules and regulations okay sometimes you know preaching is less more prashadam little overeating you know what or so many things may happen but this is all inside the boundary but i will never chant below 16 rounds because that's a bond that's an agreement so the bond and the boundary is not crossed by the demigods they may make some mistake but they'll not go beyond that but the demons they if they are agitated or disturbed in any way then they may just go beyond the boundary and they will just go ahead and do anything so that's the difference between demigod and demons and we also have our bonds and boundaries and if we cross them then we become demons and if we stay inside our boundary then you know we are in the categories of the demigods so here what happens is um, indra is completely agitated now and uh, we can understand that indra will be agitated because if krishna wants to provoke somebody what can be said when normal human beings in this world uh, are so expert sometimes we see some people are so expert in provocating according to uh, science a human being has 1 billion nerves and some people looks like they have a phd on agitating all the 1 billion nerves in us the way they talk and speak and you know, we get all angry and upset so normal human beings have that expertise and you know provoking somebody if the supreme lord decides to provocate somebody then you know what is to be said so indra gets completely provoked and you know oh what is this meanwhile krishna is uh, humbling him in such a way it's not that krishna said stop indra puja let's do varun dev puja let's do agni dev puja he said stop indra puja let's worship the stone this is very big insult and and he didn't even say that okay let's do both of their puja he said stop and do this and this is something like imagine we are making prasadam and a devotee is eagerly waiting to take prasadam and suddenly another devotee comes and now we say to the cooks you know don't serve this devotee prasadam serve the new devotee who has come now this will be too much i have been waiting for prasadam okay you give the new devotee give me too he said no you'll not get it only he'll get it so this is what happens with indra and now here uh, krishna is uh, motivating all of them come on let's do a grand grand govardhan puja so we should read garga samhita to get this you know the whole elaborate explanation the way they did the govardhan puja krishna inspires everybody and they and they fill the bullock carts and they dress themselves in beautiful way and then there are musical instruments and all the gopis and the gopabalakas and the elderly gopas and the brahmanas are doing shashti vachan and the cows and the calves and the bulls and everybody in a procession goes to uh, govardhan and then they're all clueless because they've never done this before so they ask krishna what do you want us to do oh no nothing just offer everything to govardhan and he'll take it so they just offer it and then krishna himself manifests as um, govardhan you know and he has his eyes nose and everything is seen with two hands and the vrijavasis are like 
doesn't he look like krishna only same kind of nose and eyes and they trying to analyze and krishna says don't look there just do pranam govardhan has very kindly manifested in person so instead of you know analyzing him just do pranam so everybody pays pays obeisances and then krishna who is you know now manifests as, as govardhan uh you know extends his two hands and accepts all the offerings that are made by the vrajavasis and after accepting all the offerings he gives it back and then the uh, vrajavasis worship the cows and then they do parikrama of uh, giriraj ji and then whatever uh, food stuff that was uh, offered they give it uh, as a prasadam to everybody even chandalas or dog eaters or everybody was uh, uh, given prasadam and they have a very grand program and they come back and now indra who is apparently very very angry um, calls the uh, clouds the samvartaka clouds which are supposed to be used for cosmic annihilation that you go and destroy the uh, vrindavan and these clouds are also amused uh, really you want us to do that this is not the time and it is not just go and do what i am asking you to do so the clouds uh, they are helpless because it's a um, you know order from the master so then they all go and they you know i mean of course indra sends uh, seven kinds of wind and uh, very horrifying thunderbolts and uh, very scary lightning and storms and torrential rains and oh the whole vrindavan is getting flooded and now of course uh, the vrajavasis they run to krishna oh krishna please uh, protect us krishna krishna mahabhaga and um, this is such a nice point for the sadhakas that no matter what situation in our life we should always run for shelter only towards krishna only he can protect us those who are intelligent uh, devotees they will do that we see that in bhagavatam do uttara when she saw that ashwatthama's arrow is coming to her her womb and though her father in laws were present uh, who were very powerful like arjuna and bhima but she never approached them and she approached krishna so the vrajavasis they just um, run and take shelter of um, krishna um i remember when i got uh, newly married you know um whenever anything happens let's say maybe while opening the door i hurt my elbows or let's say maybe i tripped or let's say i'm cutting some vegetables or something happened the first thing that used to come from my mouth is mamma you know like i don't know i think it naturally happens when you are young you know anything happens mummy comes up you know you fall down you know? and my husband used to you know uh, regularly tell me why does mummy comes out why not krishna come out it took me um, many years i mean i'm talking about 25 years ago when i was newly married it took me some time and conscious um repetition and replacing no i have to remember krishna if i get hurt or anything now it comes naturally but it took some time um devotees has to practice it no matter whatever happens little thing krishna is the word that has to come out from our mouth when we are hurt or because unless and until we practice it that even unconsciously krishna's name comes out then only um, what do you say the whole uh, then only will be success that is that is a that is a success of our um, uh, devotional practice because um, we don't know when the death comes how our situation will be will we be able to remember krishna or not so for every small problems and every small little thing whether we are coughing or sneezing or yawning or whatever krishna has to come out from the mouth we have to practice it and then it will come naturally so for vrajavasis it comes naturally for everything they are govinda damodhar you know there is this um, very beautiful verse in um, bilva mangal thakur's uh, govinda damodhar stuti says um, shri krishna govinda hare murari he nath narayana vasudeva jivve pibasva mritame tadevam govinda damo dharma dhaveti govinda damo dharma dhaveti the vrajvas is very naturally for everything govinda damodhar madhava just this comes out for them very naturally uh, whatever they are doing only krishna's name comes out uh, 
in fact there is so much krishna conscious that then these gopis they go out for selling butter and curd and yogurt and ghee instead of saying that take some butter take some ghee they say take half kg govinda please take fresh fresh damodar only that is coming out from their mouth and bilva mangal thakur says that you know in fact there's another bhajan of narsi mehta also he says that uh, oh how innocent these gopis are you know, narsi mehta says um, bholi re bharwada na hari ne vecha vachali soda sahasra gopino valo mataki ma dhari bholi re bharwada na hari ne vechava chali he says oh my god the lord of this 16000 gopis is put in a pot the gopis are so innocent they are vechava chali they are selling krishna take half kg krishna take 1 liter krishna take 2 liters krishna they are so krishna mai so this rajavasi is uh, they um they just approach krishna krishna help oh immediately krishna lifts the um, uh, govardhan he runs to the uh, govardhan and then he lifts it with his uh, left hand of course not not only left hand the little finger of his uh, left hand and not only little finger of the left hand the nail of the little finger the, the, the whole govardhan is resting on the nail of uh, uh, krishna's little uh, finger and then we know how he uh, holds it for 7 days 7 nights and then we know <clears throat> so many things happen uh, below giriraj you know it was not that it was some dirty place because the hill is just lifted there may be some creepers and some snakes and some insects no it was beautiful it was lush green and there were crystal clear ponds and waters and mm, there were places to stay and the places to cook and it was like a whole beautiful village inside there were place for the cattle and there was fresh green grass and all the arrangements were there inside and krishna is reciprocating and giving side long glances to radharani and the gopis and mother yashoda is happy and the sakas are happy and they are joking and madhu mangal is joking with krishna you know don't think krishna is lifting i'm just standing next to him and chanting all my brahman mantras and that's giving strength to krishna and mother yashoda is like you know what is happening krishna you must be tired you know and um, meanwhile krishna is looking at radharani so he's shaking and because he's shaking mother yashoda is thinking that giriraj is becoming heavy probably so she starts getting angry on giriraj and this is what vishwana chakravarti thakur says she says i'm cur- i'll curse you giriraj if you become heavy don't you have mercy on this little 7 year old boy you know why are you becoming heavy so giriraj just goes up a little because he doesn't want to you know put his weight on krishna so krishna is very proudly you know lifting it and he just wants to show everybody especially his girlfriends but uh, to their amazement they see giriraj is actually floating and then krishna has to time in again put his finger to show that actually it's me who is carrying giriraj and he tells giriraj why are you doing this why are you going up you know stay there on my finger and giriraj says but well you know i'm just afraid of your mother you know she may just curse me she doesn't know that you are shaking not because of weakness but because of looking at radha rani so of course uh, so many things are happening there and we need another one hour to complete that how uh, so many things so many talks are happening and and out of all that uh, the gopis are telling krishna it's not you who is lifting actually it's radha rani and krishna says what is this come on now i am lifting it so no you are maybe lifting giriraj but radha rani is lifting you in the heart so she is actually lifting the whole burden with you and the giriraj and then there are other gopis who tell krishna you know don't show us this uh, you know uh, so much of your what do you say style you know that you are lifting actually all this strength has come because of our makhan you have been stealing our butter all along and you've been eating that butter so that's why you got all the strength to lift giriraj so there is this um, beautiful bhajan in uh, gujaratis you know the gopis say uh, nand na ko varata me na karo badhai mota thaya maro ma kha na khai says that don't uh, show it off all the strength that you got is because of that butter i made 
because i made that butter and i churned it in such a way and it's so nourishing to you that today you got all the strength to live over that so of course lot of things happen will not go to that and try to get try to bring you all to the conclusion so finally um you know after all that seven days of past time uh krishna uh, see actually um not only there were strong winds and storms and thunder and lightning but uh, indra had also made sure that there is darkness everywhere there was dark clouds and so the whole vrindavan or the whole vraja was completely dark as if it's like you know annihilation time but the vrajavasis didn't get any problem because um, krishna is present so one of the 64 qualities of krishna mentioned in bhakti rasamrita sindhu is tejo sanvita krishna emanates so much effulgence from his body and not only that he is also wearing the kaustubha mani so there is light everywhere and not only that there is this uh, devotee of krishna surdas a blind devotee who has written so many beautiful bhajans and he says in the bhajan actually the toenail of krishna the light which is coming from the toenail of krishna is actually the light by which the whole world is uh, lightened otherwise the whole world will go into darkness so um, he sings a very beautiful bhajan he says dridaina charanana kero bharo so dridaina charanana kero श्री वल्लभ नख चंद्र छटा बिन सारो जगंधेरो देन इज श्री वल्लभ नख चंद्र छटा बिन वल्लभ इज डियर आवर लॉर्ड श्री वल्लभ नख चंद्र छटा बिन जस्ट हिज नेल इज गिविंग द लाइट बाय विच द होल वर्ल्ड विल बी लाइट एंड अदरवाइज द होल वर्ल्ड विल बी इन डार्कनेस and of course uh, bhajan goes on where of course, i don't want to get into that okay so um then uh, here here it is so here finally krishna you know the the the, the reporters the journalist the uh, when indra asked them a report so what's the report from uh, from vraja how many dead bodies how many died and the reporters say well uh, we're not able to calculate the bodies because we see the whole vrindavan is empty so then there's some more reporters sent down there and they say well actually we are seeing something very weird a hill is floating and then there are some other reporters who come and say well actually there are people under the hill you know and then they're very happily playing games and eating and sleeping and making merry and then indra realizes oh what is this i tried my best and i couldn't do anything to this rajavasi so he personally comes on his airavat and he tries and all but nothing works out and krishna had made such an arrangement that above the govardhan hill is the sudarshan chakra the chakra is moving so fast that the water is not allowed to uh, go on the govardhan it's just flowing sideways and then krishna had anantasesh who was like a boundary wall you know so the water doesn't even come below uh, giriraj because there are walls everywhere made with uh, made by anantasesha so he was all very well protected and they were all very very happy inside in fact vishwanath chakravarti thakur says that not only the vaishnavas below the giri govardhan even above the govardhan nobody was disturbed not even a leaf from a tree of uh, giriraj was uh, damaged and um, kumbhaj rishi was there now i'll very quickly uh, tell you the past time of kumbhaj rishi and try to uh, close this session another 5 minutes i've already gone over time uh, but this past time i want to share this is, this is very interesting and very humorous actually um, we all know that lord shiva gives amazing bhagavatam classes and it's very motivating and parvati devi is the best audience because she asks the right questions so once lord shiva was giving a class on vaishnava seva and parvati devi was so motivated when shiva was saying that krishna is pleased only when we serve Va- vaishnavas and krishna eats only through the mouth of vaishnavas and you know all the bhagavatam quotes so the next day mother uh, parvati tells shiva that i'm so inspired by your class i have decided to serve vaishnav i have decided to uh, invite vaishnav for bhojan for prasadam and shiva says wow that's very good you should feed the vaishnavas so who is that vaishnav whom you have invited she says kumbhaj rishi she was says what 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 did you do you should have asked me i would have give you some counseling you should 
why did you you know invite kumbhaja uh, rishi parvati devi says what's wrong with him shiva says no nothing wrong with him but it's very difficult to you know satisfy him because he has a big appetite parvati says oh come on no, i have 1000 cooks and 500 helpers and 1500 servers and i have all the arrangement you know i can make sure that you know kumbhaja rishi is satisfied don't worry Shiva says, "All right, I don't worry, but don't call me if you are put in problem. And I'm going up, you know, uh, for uh, uh, my meditation, and you sort out. This is your problem." So Parvati Devi says, "Oh, come on, don't worry. I'll take care of it." So uh, as planned, Kumbhaj Muni comes for uh, lunch, and Parvati Devi is very happy. She has made number of varieties. So you know, you, know, you give a choki, small stool, and then she puts the uh, leaf, you know, green leaf. and now she starts serving so as she comes to serve to kumbhaj rishi you know the usual thing when we serve somebody we put little and then a second helping and then a third helping and then you know usually the devotees are like no no i don't want any more and we are like no come on prabhu ji you have to eat come on take little more this is how it happens but in this case as soon as she puts a little and she is asking uh, shall i put a little more you know very sweetly and kumbhaj rishi says what do you mean little more put the whole bucket No, don't ask me this little, little. Come on, put the whole bucket. You know, I'm going to eat the whole thing. And Parvati is like, really? You want me to put the whole bucket? Yeah, come on, whole, put the whole bucket. So she just puts the whole bucket of sabji, the curry, and the whole bucket of rice, and the whole bucket of dal. And by the time she empties the bucket and goes to the kitchen and comes back, the plate is clean. He's already eaten. She gets worried. My God, what is this? You know, he has a voracious appetite. and then now the whole drama starts one by one the buckets are coming and pouring buckets are coming buckets are coming and everything is exhausted and kumbhaj rishi is like come on bring more bring more bring more and now parvati is like where is my lord and shiva had already told her that don't you involve me and don't you call me into this now she didn't know what to do so she calls krishna oh krishna please help me and i am in big mess here is a vaishnava in my house and i am not able to satisfy there is nothing left so krishna says come on don't worry i'll help you so krishna comes there as a small boy five year old boy and then he comes and says oh mother i'm very hungry can you give me some food and parvati is you know under her you know she's whispering what is this i ask you to come and help me and you are also coming and asking me that you want food And Krishna says, "Come on, whatever you have, little bit you give me." So she makes a plate, and then Krishna, as a small boy, you know, he starts all naughtiness. He says, "I want to eat with him. I want to eat with him on the same place." You know. So now, when the children start, you know, making like that, uh, you know, you can't say no to them. So Kumbhaj Rishi says, "Okay, okay, fine, fine." is small child what can be done okay you can eat with me no problem so he puts his plate just next to uh, kumbhaj rishi and starts eating now just after eating one morsel krishna says yes i'm satisfied now bring water i want to wash my hand so kumbhaj rishi says well you just started eating you're already satisfied so krishna says yes i'm not like you you've been eating last one hour and you're still not satisfied i'm satisfied i'm done so they bring the water so when they bring the water he washes hand in such a way the you know the water is all over in you know, on kumbhaj rishi's uh, plate also and the usual system is when we are eating with somebody when one person gets up and washes hand you know everybody that's why you know when we are eating with somebody we all wait for everybody to finish that's the etiquette you don't go and wash hand before everybody in the table finishes so now kumbhaj muni has to get up because the water has been poured and the hand has been washed you know and they are on the same uh, choki the same table so then kumbhaj muni gets up and he also washes hand and then uh, krishna shows his form then kumbhaj rishi says well my lord you're not fair to me first of all you didn't allow me to eat i wanted to eat some more okay no problem you didn't even allow me to drink water i wanted to drink water at least after prasadam one is supposed to drink water but after washing hand you know he doesn't take water so you you have kept me bereft of water also then krishna says come on don't worry i'll give you a lot of water i promise you this not now but i'll make sure that you get a lot of water to drink so now when uh, indra is pouring all this rain and krishna is carrying this giriraj he immediately calls kumbhaj rishi come on come i'll give you all the water that you want so kumbhaj rishi becomes very happy he is there standing and drinking all the water which is coming down from you know govardhan is like from the sudarshan chakra flowing over govardhan and 
right into kumbhaj rishi's uh, mouth so that is why after some time you know indra sees that there's no water the whole vrindavan is dry and so he's just asking his um, clouds you know what happened you know why aren't you you know why did you stop you know the rains and they said well there is there is no more water left in our store so indra is saying come on now put the motor on and you know start the switch and get the water again and they said well there is no power supply because krishna is the whole power who gives all the energy you know and the krishna has cut the power supply so he said there is no more water there is no way we can generate any more water and finally when he is defeated then it comes to indra's uh, mind oh what did i do i have been so foolish here is a supreme personality of godhead what did i do now he is very guilty he doesn't know what to do immediately goes for counseling to brahma brahma what should i do brahma says all right it's happened it's happened now go and ask uh, forgiveness so take surubhi with you and then that will help you so then um, indra takes um, surubhi and then approaches krishna after seven days seven nights after rajavas is go back to home and then krishna is alone in the forest and then indra and surubhi approaches so first surubhi approaches and krishna is very happy on seeing surubhi and then surubhi recommends oh here is indra you know he wants to say something to you and then indra cries and then does the stuti you know how foolish i have been and krishna forgives him and then krishna says it's all right now go back you know now go back and continue your seva i don't want to take your uh, seva away i just said i wanted to remove that anartha from your heart and i thought that was so beautiful that this is one quality of krishna is that he doesn't want to you know he just wants to change the disposition of the mind he doesn't hate us he hates the anartha in us he just wants to remove that you know so that's what he did to indra so i don't want to take your position i just want to change your disposition you know just um, go back you know and continue your uh, service you know actually krishna krishna is so powerful he is so merciful he can give the whole world to us but if we don't have the right disposition then we may take the whole world and leave krishna and go away so that's why krishna is very kind you know uh, as a devotee is uh, apart from whatever things we may sometimes ask krishna for our in in our material situations we should also ask him that along with you know all the material facilities that you are providing us please also give us the right disposition otherwise we'll we'll lose it you know in the in the midst of all these things we'll lose the purpose of life so this is what happens to indra and then indra is humbled and um, it's not that krishna wanted to humiliate indra he just wanted to humble indra krishna is very kind he whenever he um, so call punishes the devotees also it's only for their rectification krishna just wants to uh, help them rectify he doesn't want to cause pain to them krishna loves us more than we love ourselves and every time that we go through difficult situations you know it's he who is more in pain than us but just like a surgeon has to cut the stomach just like a doctor who has to give an injection krishna has to sometime you know uh, uh, make such a uh, situations in our life where we are corrected even though a little pain but then you know rest of it will be beautiful so so kind of krishna and that's how the um, govardhan pastime ends and everybody is uh, happy back to their uh, houses and back to their uh, services so um, govardhan is very very special in fact um, i was just reading yesterday one passage from garga samhita that simply talking about govardhan purifies simply hearing about govardhan simply seeing govardhan in fact um, even if somebody is doing 5000 years tapasya in kedarnath is not equal to just seeing govardhan once or even if somebody has a desire they have not seen govardhan but just a desire in the heart that i want to see govardhan they are purified even if somebody does 1000 vratas of janmashtami staying you know fasting on janmashtami 1000 years that is also not equal to just seeing govardhan once so that's the mahima of govardhan whether you are or you know on ram navmi you are at ayodhya or on krishna janmashtami you are at mathura it's not equal to seeing govardhan once or touching govardhan um, once or you know doing parikrama of govardhan our previous acharyas have also 
emphasize so much on the importance of Govardhan Puja, Govardhan Parikrama, and you know, taking shelter of Govardhan. We see Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur in his last days, the 46 days that he was ill. He was every day chanting Govardhan Ashtakam and the Chatak Parvat in Puri. He was meditating it and on it as uh, Govardhan. In fact, um, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur also gave Girira Shila to one of his disciples who was uh, going to England for preaching. We know how our dear Srila Prabhupada was so attached to Giriraj Govardhan. He had Govardhan in his briefcase and he had taken three Govardhan Shilas to the US. And we know at the fag end of his life, he wanted to do Govardhan Parikrama. And then Tamil Krishna Maharaj and others had to stop him. Then he said, okay, you do it on my behalf. And even till today, Srila Prabhupada's disappearance day, Srila Prabhupada's uh, Archa Vigraha is taken on uh, Giriraj Parikrama. We know even how uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu worshipped Giriraj Shila and he gave it to Raghunath Das Goswami. We know how Raghunath Das Goswami, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, they wrote, uh, you know, bhajans, you know, Govardhan Ashtakam, glorifying uh, Govardhan. And we know how our uh, dear Sanatan Goswami, even at the age of 91 years, he was doing Govardhan um, Parikrama and then Krishna had to stop him. Baba, now stop. I'm giving you this stone which has my footprints and you just uh, circumambulate it for four times. It's enough. So we see in our whole Guru Parampara, there is so much emphasis on uh, uh, Govardhan Parikrama, Govardhan Puja and uh, taking uh, shelter of uh, Govardhan. So Govardhan is very, very, very merciful. It's our great fortune today to have this opportunity to talk about Govardhan, hear about Govardhan and um, every devotee, uh, whether they have Govardhan Shila or not, they should have a picture of uh, Govardhan in their house and keep Govardhan in their um, mind and every day, you know, see the picture of Govardhan or offer some arati or lamps uh, to Govardhan. Because in Kali Yuga, our hearts are like stone and uh, we have to replace it by this stone, Govardhan take shelter of uh, Govardhan and only by Govardhan's um, mercy can we get the blessings of Radha and Krishna. So with this I'll um, end it here. Thank you so much. Um, I think I went uh, half an hour beyond my time. Thank you so much dear devotees for patiently giving me a hearing. Um, Giriraj Govardhan ki jai, Jagat Guru Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. Krishna lage sab Krishna 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 lage sab Krishna 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 lage sab Krishna Krishna